Okay, Algebra 1, Chapter 10. This is uh, the first part of the review, and we'll go over the second part tomorrow and test the following day. So let's start with number 1. We're simplifying radical expressions here, and what we need to first recognize is underneath that square root bracket, are there any perfect squares? And so I'm going to keep my 3 right here, and I'm just going to put it in parentheses. And then I'm going to break that square root of 18 down into the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. And I know that the square root of 9 is 3. So that's going to be 3 times 3, which is 9 square roots of 2. So look for perfect squares inside of those problems, 9 square roots of 2. Let's look at the second problem. Second problem, same philosophy. Now I'm looking at the square root of 72. And so go ahead and hit pause and try to find a perfect square that goes into 72. OK, so the largest perfect square that goes into 72 is the square root of 36. So that's going to be square root of 36 times the square root of 2, which ends up just giving me the square root of 2. Excuse me. 6 times the square root of 2. All right. Now I'm going through pretty quick, but you can you can hit pause, you can rewind when you need to. Uh, obviously, we went over these problems in the review, so this is just a little additional information. Um, so you can stop and rewind it in case you need it. Let's go on to number 3. Well, oh, I don't want to... There we go. Number 3. This one was a little bit more difficult. <clears throat> in this case, we should recognize that we have a square root on the bottom, and we cannot have radicals on the bottom of our fraction, so we have to get rid of it. We multiply by the conjugate, which is 2 plus the square root of 6, and we multiply top and bottom by the exact same thing. So on the top, we just have distributed property. 5 times 2 is 10. And then 5 times the square root of 6 is just 5 square roots of 6. Again, we can't multiply whole numbers times radicals. We just leave it 5 square roots of 6. Now on the bottom, what our conjugate allowed us to do is it, absolute, or it actually uh, eliminates the outside and the inside. So all I have to do is first and last. So 2 times 2 is going to give me 4. A negative times a positive is a negative. And the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is just 6. So that gives me a final answer of 10 plus 5 square roots of 6 all over negative 2. Now I need to look at this. And if the negative 2 would go into the 10, which it does, and the negative 2 would also go into the 5 evenly, which it does not, that means that I can't reduce this any further. So it just ends up being 10 plus 5 square roots of 6 all over negative 2. So let's do one more of those. Again, go ahead and hit pause and try to work this through on your own. Okay, so if you pause, now we're back, and we're going to multiply by the conjugate, 6 plus the square root of 7. On the top, that's going to give me 24 plus 4 square roots of 7. On the bottom, again, my outside and inside will eliminate, so when I FOIL this, I just take the first two numbers. First and first, that's going to give me 6 times 6, which is 36. Negative times a positive is going to be a negative. And the square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is just 7. So my final answer is 24 plus 4 square roots of 7 all over 29. Again, look to see if there's a number that would divide evenly into 24 4 and 29. In this case, 29 is a prime number, so there's nothing more that I can do. So that is number 3. 
Number four. Now we're going to be simplifying a radical that has a number and variables in it. So let's do the number first. Just like we did before, this is going to be the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. We know the square root of 25 is 5. So that just makes it 5 square roots of 2. Now let's look at the square root of x and the square root of y to the fifth power. Again, they're both being uh, they're both being square rooted. Again, for my lack of a better English term, there we're taking the square root of both of them. I can't do anything with the square root of x, so I'm just going to leave it square root of x. Now, square root of y to the fifth, what I need to find is the greatest even number that's less than 5. And so that's going to be y to the fourth, or square root of y to the fourth, times the square root of y. That's the same thing as y to the fifth. Now, I can take the square root of y to the fourth. Because it's an even number, I just divide it by 2, and that's actually y squared but I cannot do anything with the square root of y. So now I combine all three of these terms together. The things that are on the outside are the 5 and the y squared. And when I say outside, I mean outside of the square root bracket. And the things that are on the inside of the square root bracket are 2xy. So 5y squared square roots of 2xy. Now, for numbers 1 through 4 that I just did, you will find examples of those on page 615. So let's move on to number 5. Okay, number 5 is operations with radicals. Remember when I'm adding or subtracting things, I have to have common. These are common. So I can look at that as 1 square root of 5. So it's going to be 1 square root of 5 minus 8 square root of 5. 1 minus 5, or excuse me, 1 minus 8 is negative 7. And just like fractions where I keep the denominator, here I keep the radical. So that's going to be negative 7 square roots of 5. In number 6, I've got multiplication, so I do not need uh, common radicals. But what I want to do is I want to multiply the numbers first. So 8 times 3 is going to be 24. Then I multiply the radicals. And square root of 3 times the square root of 8 is the square root of 24. Now I need to look into that 24 and see if there are any perfect squares. And in this case there are. That's going to be square root of 4 times the square root of 6, which is going to be 2 square roots of 6. Don't forget the 24 that's out front. So 24 times 2 squared to 6 is going to give me a final answer of 48 square roots of 6. Now, I believe the next one is, nope, I'm sorry. Uh, it must be number 8 that's a distributed property. Let's look at number 7. Same type of problem, except it's not in parentheses, just got a multiplication sign. So we've got 5 times 6, which is 30. And then the square root of 3 times the square root of 10 is the square root of 30. Now I look at my factors of 30 and see if any of those are perfect squares. 1 and 30. 1 is a perfect square, but that's not going to help me at all. 30 is not. 2 and 15, neither one of those are perfect squares. And 5 and 6, neither one of those are perfect squares. So I am completely done. I cannot simplify any further. Number 8. Number 8 is distributed property. So I'm going to take the square root of 5 times 2, which is going to give me 2 square roots of 5. Then I'm going to take the square root of 5 times 4 square roots of 2, and that's going to give me 5 square roots of 10. Obviously, square root of 5 and square root of 10 cannot be simplified by perfect squares. And since they're not the same, I cannot add them together. 
So my final answer is 2 square roots of 5 plus 5 square roots of 10. Questions 5 through 8, you can find examples of those on page 621 and 622. Question number 9. This is one of our radical equations, so we want to get x by itself. So let's move the things that are not connected to the square root sign. So we're going to subtract 7. That's going to give me square root of x plus 5 equals 5. Then to eliminate that square root, we're going to square both sides. And that gives me x plus 5 equals 25. And now one more step and we've got it. We're going to subtract 5. So that gives me an answer of x equals 20. Number 10. Same thing. We want to get things away from the square root bracket. I'm going to take the 8 first. So I'm going to add 8 to both sides. That gives me 2 square roots of x minus 11 equals 12. Now that 2 is multiplying by that square root, so the opposite is going to be division. Now I have x minus, excuse me, square root of x minus 11 equals 6. Square both sides. I get x minus 11 equals 36. Add 11. And that gives me a grand total of 47. Okay. Questions 9 through twin, 9 through twin, 9 through 10 can be found on page 625 to 626. So we've got two questions to go. Let's look at number 11. Number 11, we're going to be finding the missing side. So this is going to be using the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Remember that a and b are the legs and c is the hypotenuse, which is the longest side. In this case, we find the longest side by going diagonal or opposite from the right angle. So our C is going to be X. So this is going to be 5 squared plus 12 squared equals X squared, giving me 25 plus 144 equals X squared. 144 plus 125 is 169. And when I square root both sides, that tells me that x is going to be 13. So let's look at number 12. And this is going to end our review today. So again, we've got the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. My hypotenuse is diagonal from my 90 degree angle. So that means 16 and x are going to be my a and b. So I'm just going to label it x squared plus 16 squared equals 26 squared. And so that gives me x squared plus 256 equals 676 and I'm going to subtract 256 and that gives me 420 and when I take the square root of 420 I get x is approximately 20.49 and so um, let's say they round to the nearest tenth they will tell you this is going to be 
20.5, don't forget the label, will be feet. 20.5 feet. Okay, there's 12 questions for the start of the review. Again, we will finish the review tomorrow, and the test will be the following day.